Hi guys, this is Tanya um, with Karma's a Stitch. Thanks for joining me. This will be cast on number four, I think. Let's take a look. Let me just verify. This will be cast on number five. Um, it is Saturday, December 30th, and um, I I'm having a hard time deciding. I have three tops that I will be casting on between now and the end of January, at least three. But I have three of them right here with the yarn. I already own the patterns. I already own the yarn. I didn't, Don't change the channel, TV. Al I asked Alex to come in because I'm gonna have her make the decision for me. So Alex, I need you to come look at this. I need you to look. So I have this one that I want to make. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have this one, which I showed you earlier. Mm -hmm. And I have this one. Mm -hmm. Which one should, mm -hmm. which one should I do? A, B, or C? C. C it is. So we will be casting on the Dathan. This is the one Alex chose. This has been literally, this has literally been in a project bag since last Advent season. So here is the bag. I have so many minis. Oh, it's been in a project bag for a year and a half because these minis are from a Christmas in July advent that I did July of 2022. So I will be casting on the Dathan. It, um, a lot of these are from Ramblin' Needles and I thought I had some Maybe not. I think the majority of these are going to be from Ramblin' Needles. Um, oh, Miracle's behind there touching the tripod because she thinks Alex has treats for her, but she does not. Um, I will be using a size. Oh, there's another great photo of it. Super scrappy top. Um, needle size, needles and notions. Yeah, I think this is why I ended up not casting this on yet. Gauge size and below gauge size needles of your preferred lengths for working the body. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't give you a needle size. Below gauge needles of your preferred length for working the neck, gauge size and below gauge size needles of your preferred type for working small circumferences, stitch markers. And then it gives you the gauge, possibly a US four is where you should start, but it is encouraging lots of swatching for the neck, the body and the ribbing. That right there is probably why I have yet to cast this on. Um, so I will start with the size four I will not be doing any swatching. Please forgive me if you're a big swatcher. So I'm gonna get started on this. And I believe that the construction of this, let's see here. Yeah, it's got the schematics here. So I love that it's got these winged sleeves and that the cuff for the sweater starts way down, more like on your forearm around your elbow. So I am excited to do this. Uh, several folks, um, several folks have have done this in my local knit shop, and I'm really excited to try it. I did have a lady in the knit shop do it with a bit of a turtleneck, but a loose turtleneck. I will probably be doing that. Um, it's got random striping, so I'll probably, I'm sorry if you can hear the wrapper going on in the background, <laughs> but I enjoy having her in here and she, she's opening things right now. So, um, I'll probably be using dice 
to figure out how many rounds for, per stripe. Um, I don't believe, after looking at one recently, I don't believe I'll be doing more than four rounds per color, which means lots of ends, lots and lots of ends to be woven in. Um, there is, uh, she gives a, a link to a stripe generating tool that could potentially help you. Um, so yeah, I've been wanting to cast this on for a year and a half. I guess today's the day. Thank you, Alex, for choosing this one. I've wanted it for a long time. So I hope everybody's doing good. I'll be back with progress soon. All right, guys, see you. Okay, guys, so here are the minis that I've got. And the pattern says, this design allows you to play with color in a diverting and relaxing way and to knit a sweater that's completely unique to you. You'll need to devise your own stripe sequence before you start. The only rules are that each, stripes, each stripe uses one, two, or three rounds and that all 15 shades are used. You may wish to designate one or more shades for the use in your rib at, at the hem, cuffs, or neck. Use one of the following methods to develop your stripe sequence or feel free to develop your own method. No method is the best one and no sequence could be simply chose, no sequence could be described as being better than another. The point is to simply choose an approach to striping that suits you. Follow the pattern, play with color, see what happens and enjoy yourself. So these are the colors that I have in this bag. I was told that solids and tonals were the best. Um, so I tried not to get too much speckle, um, striping, anything like that. I think these two here would be the closest that I've got to something like that. Maybe this one a little bit, but I'm super excited to get started. Um, let's see how this goes. Hi guys, so I'm sitting here. I just finished the ribbing of my Dathan and look at how much I have left. This is it. Can you see that? Let's see. That is what I have left for my 20 gram mini. But look at this color. Let's see if I can do that. I'm doing it one handed, so I'm so sorry. But look at how pretty that is. I don't know if you can see it. It's got blues and browns and greens, but I have the ribbing done. And so now I'm getting ready to go in and start doing my sequences with all my different striped color minis that you saw me and Alex had laid them all out in order for me. So what I've decided is my largest stripe is going to be four rows. That's the most rows I'll do with any one color. Excuse me. It's the 
one. And so I found this dice rolling app. Um, I had Erica at the yarn shop show me um, this dice. It was funny because I started talking about dice and her kids apparently know all about dice <laughs> and games with dice. And so she helped me find this dice app based on her kids. So I'll turn the camera around so you can see. So basically that's the screen of my iPad. And when I'm ready to add another color, I'll just tap the screen. And the next color I would do four stripes. I'll do the four rounds of that color. And then I can hit it because I'm ready to join my next color. I'll do two rounds of the next one. So that is how I will continue to work on my day thin. I've got the ribbing done. It looks so nice, you guys. It looks so great. I love it. So I'm ready to start with my color stripes and this is all I have left. Look at that. That's a 20 gram mini it took me to do my ribbing. So that's it. And I will see you guys later with some more progress. Bye for now. So we're at the library. Alex is checking out some books. We'll see what she comes back with. I am working on my day thin. I will work on this a little bit longer through the library time today and then one more appointment and then I will probably be ending this so we will share progress at that point. See you in a bit. Hi guys, I am wrapping up cast on number five, which was the day thin. Um, you will have already watched me talk about the yarn and the needles and the pattern. Um, so I'm just gonna show you my progress, how far I got today. It is January 3rd at 8.24 p.m. Um, so I will show, share this with you guys and then I'll edit and get this uploaded. So here we go. So that's how far I've gotten on the day thin. And I am just doing random stripes. The most I'm doing is four rounds per color. I am using the dice. Like this green right here was four, the brown was four. This one here was just one. So that's the progress I'm making. And I just fell in love with this color right here of the ribbing, holy smokes. I just thought that was beautiful. So anyway, this is the progress I've made. It is going to go into the project bag. And I am going to work on cast on number six. I hope you guys are enjoying watching these. I'm certainly having a good time. I'm excited to be able to go back and get some of these because I'm having a good time working on them. I don't want to put them down. So I hope you guys are doing well and I will see you soon. <laughs>